Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In today's review, we're going to look at a new RDA from Vapors Cloud. Now Vapors Cloud, they are well known for the Valhalla RDA series and the Valhalla V2. The V2 was going to be a dual coil RDA. That one, the first one, was going to be a big one at 40mm in diameter. They then brought out a mini version, which is going to be 30mm, again dual coil. And now they've released a third version of the V2, which will be this one, the Valhalla V2 Micro. The Micro, again, dual coil, not single. Diameter this one will be 25 millimeters. So what they've done there is quite clever. They've taken the same RDA, the basic design, the build deck. It's the same for all, all three of them, but they've made them different sizes. So depending on your, your style of vaping, you want a big RDA at 40 millimeters. Go for V2, next size down, go for the mini at 30, like a slightly smaller one, if 25 is small to you, then go for the micro. But this one wasn't sent to me from them, and I didn't buy this one myself personally. One of my patrons, one of my subscribers, and a fellow moderator on the Nature Rate channel, which is going to be Daniel, put his logo up here. Daniel has bought this himself, and he sent it to me to try out, play around with it give my thoughts and opinions. So yeah, this was sent to me from Daniel. So big thanks to him. So what we're gonna do now, go down, open the box, simple box, 40 quick build, come, come back up top, and we'll talk about the Valhalla B2 Micro RDA from Vapors Cloud. So yeah, down at the table with the Valhalla V2 Micro RDA, little brown box, on the front it says Valhalla, got your Valhalla helmet logo, around the box, nothing inside. This side, a few details. So this could be the Valhalla V2 Micro RDA, obviously. Batch one, available in three colors, matte black, gunmetal, or stainless steel. Indicator here is that this is gonna be matte black. Size-wise, this will be 25 millimeter RDA. Like I said earlier on, the original Valhalla V2 was 40 millimeters. The Valhalla Mini was 30 millimeters. And now the Micro is 25 millimeters, or 0.98 inches. This side, nothing. This side, just Vapors Cloud logo. Little slot there, slide your finger in and open it up. Straight around the top, you get two Allen keys of different sizes. These are for your 510 pin and your, and your squonk pin adapter. You get another little bag there inside, you can get it out. Inside here will be your fixed 510 pin. Pre-installed will be the squonk pin. A spare drip tip, I think it's about the same sort of size some spare o-rings and some spare post screws. These are with flathead. On the deck it's going to be flathead screws. As you can see, no flathead screwdriver this one. You need your own. As you can see, that's all there is. Accessory wise, there's no coils and no cotton. They do assume you've got your own. You can use this sort of RDA, your audio or rebuilder. You can have your own style of coils that you like anyway. So it's good in a way, they don't bother including any. And then of course the RDA itself, we'll pop that out. Put this all to one side. Going to zoom in slightly for this one. So yeah, here we are with the RDA itself. Like I said, this will be 25mm RDA, this one. Matte black. On the front here, got engraved with the Valhalla logo, and it says Valhalla. Around this side, you've got your honeycomb airflow. You've got 15 holes on one side, 15 holes on the other side. On the top will be 810 drip tip. Pop it out. Inside here, there's a little ultimate insert, which I'll show you later on. In this review, I know some people may already have the Valhalla V2 or the Mini. This one is going to be exactly the same, but smaller. Going to go through it more in details for anyone who's not had one before in the past. But yeah, this is going to be the Valhalla V2, the Valhalla Mini, and the Valhalla Micro. They are all the same. It's just going to be the size is different, obviously. This one being 25 millimeters. Show that insert in a second. On the base here, it does say Vapors Cloud. Like I said, installed there will be your squamp pin. There's two little grub screws here. You can take out that squamp pin totally and install a fixed 510 pin or with these little grub screws here. You can take one out, which I will do. Because in this review, I'm not gonna be squonking it. I don't want to undo this packaging and scratch up that pin. So I'll use one of these little grub screws. You get that out there, put it inside the hole there, screw it all the way down. It will stop and it's in place. So now that's going to be a fixed 510 pin. But like I said, you can take out that one totally 
use the um, bigger Allen key provided to unscrew that one and just place your fixed 510 pin. But like I said, I don't want to scratch mine too much because it isn't mine. So yeah, like I said, screw it all the way down and that's it now, a fixed 510. Gonna put on a little base and pop it apart. So top cap just pull straight off. Look at the deck in a minute. Right inside here, it's gonna be like I said, an ultimate insert. There's a little notch there for your airflow and a notch there for your airflow. This insert you can take out, put your finger inside, just twist it around and it will pop out. It does go into a little groove. There's a little groove this side here, as you can see, and a the groove there. So this part does move for your airflow slightly, but it does lock. How this works is, this is where your airflow comes in here. If I get the build deck, the airflow comes in here up under the coil. So this will sit directly in place like that. It doesn't move. It's all there. So the airflow comes straight in under the coil. How this works is when this is in place, these air honeycomb slots line up with this flat edge here. So you get it all fully open like so. As you turn it round, it blocks off a few holes each side this way. The air still comes in this side, goes straight down and through the hole here. So you can turn it, like I said, all the way fully open to like one row. How it goes though is your airflow will come in either way in the here, circulate around this flat edge and come down and up and under the coil. Very simple design, very easy, I must say. There's a little O-ring there, obviously, for your 810 drip tip. Put it back inside, just line up this slot here with the honeycomb, push it inside, give it a little twist, you'll hear it click, turn it round, and it's now locked back into place. Very simple, very easy. If I put it on the deck, I should be able to show you. So right now it's fully open, because you can see the ultimate insert on the inside. If I turn it round, you watch slowly, it looks closed off these holes. You can close off three, six, nine, twelve, etc., and cut it really down. This one I like mine with my airflow about halfway open. About there is fine for me. I've not had any whistle with this one, I must say. It's a nice smooth airflow, but really good system. So fully open, it will stop. Fully closed, again, it will stop. Like I said, if you've got one of these before in the past, you know that works. I'm showing this one for anyone who's never had one in the past. Yeah, I do like that airflow system. I do like that ultimate insert. Let's look at the deck. So yeah, here we are the build deck. It is gonna be a dual coil audio, obviously. You can put one coil in here, one coil in here. The airflow comes in at the side like I showed you, comes up here under the coil. It is slightly angled. When you put your coil in here, you can have your, your coil totally over the air hole or pull it over slightly. I have mine slightly over when I install my one. So one coil there and one coil there. The base there, you can see the squonk pin, it's now sealed off with that little grub screw. But if it's not, it'll be open for squonking. That squonk pin is slightly raised, not too much, just slightly. The juice well, it is quite deep. I'll say it's probably about a six millimeter deep. So it will hold quite a lot of juice. Now you might think that if you've got the little gaps here between the poles, that any juice might flood out. You need to remember that when the ultim insert is on top, it's gonna to be sealed totally. This whole part here is sealed with that Ultum, so it will hold quite a lot of juice. So yeah, what I'm gonna do, go put in a quick build with this one. As you can see, I've already done my screws for the post, all four undone. The code today with an h vape obviously. It's gonna be a flat Clapton. This will be a 0.42 ohm. It's gonna be dual code, so we have a 0.2 by the time I've finished. In the diameter of these ones will be three millimeters. What I do with these ones, I have my coil here. I put it on a rod, like so. I want to add one more turn to mine for a reason. One more wrap I've added there to that one. And again with this one, I'm gonna add one more wrap as well. Let's turn it around. I'll hit the camera. I have one more wrap. Yeah, the reason I add one more wrap is because that airflow under the coil it is quite big, with one wrap less, it's not quite big enough to cover the whole space. So I had one extra wrap, like I said. Now my legs with these ones, I cut mine about 5.5 millimeters. I'll get my coily tool. Gonna go for 5.5 millimeters. Like so. Don't even cut my legs on both of these coils. So 
So yeah, I find that five and a half millimeters is perfect for me. Install the cord is really simple. Put one in one side and the other side. Hold it all the way down, screw it into place. Once it's screwed down, just get your rod. Move that call out of the way a second. We'll do the second one. Get your rod and again pull that round. Now, like I said, it's up to you how you want these coils. Some people might like these really close to the air hole. I like mine further away this way, more towards the middle. Not too far, but a bit away from the actual air hole itself. Because that air is coming in at the side and coming up at a slight angle. So I like mine like that. You could put your coils more over the air hole or more closest together. It's one of those RDAs you need to play around to find what's good for you. But I find that my ones here with the airflow about halfway covered is fine for me. Straighten them all up. I'll tighten that post down a bit more. I think it might be slightly loose. And it was. Make sure you tighten these all the way down really, really tight to get a good connection. About there. Let's put on the device. We'll check the ohms. New atomizer. So let's say this could be a 0.19, which is fine for me. Going to fire this one about 37 watts. Going to dry fire it a few times. A few hot spots there. Looking really nice, glowing evenly. You can see there by my picture there, you can see that my coil, like I said, it's like halfway over the airflow, because that airflow comes at an angle. I find I find this is really good. Again, like I said, play around. That came in at, in the end, still a 0.19. So yeah, let it cool down, we'll wick it up. Just get your cotton, pull it straight through. So, I cut my cotton slightly over the base, about two, three millimeters extra, like so. And then just do the second one. Squonk wise, I think this would be really good for squonking. But I'm not gonna go squonk this today, I'm just gonna be using it as a dripper. But that's fine. Give it a little bit of a comb out if you want to. Don't have to do too much of a comb out. Just trim it. I cut a little bit off the edges as always. Then just set the cotton straight down into those wick holes. Nice and simple, nice and easy. Make sure it goes all the way down. Don't want that is there, a bit of plastic actually, that from the um, cotton. From this piece. Let's be careful with that, make sure. Get some juice. Today's gonna to be my um, Mr. Potion Egyptian Berry. This one's gonna be zero milligrams. This sort of low build. I don't need any nicotine in my juice. Get a quick fire. Go 45 watts. That's going to be a new coil. Mm. 
really, really nice smell, I must say. So yeah, I can tell the top cap there. You line up the honeycomb air holes to this little hole here. Push it straight down. This is held with two O-rings. These O-rings are really nice and tight, I must say. Push it all the way down and it's in place. Like I said there, you can see my airflow is totally open. If I turn it around, I'm going to close mine halfway, about there. Eight and drip tip on the top. Going to be a 0.23 now, it's finally bedded in. Going to fire this one about 60 watts. Look at vape. Yeah, really, really nice flavour. So yeah, that's going to be the Valhalla V2 Micro RDA. Scrub top, have a quick vape, have a quick talk. So yeah, that's going to be the Valhalla V2 Micro, up close and personal. It's the same build. It's settled down at a 0.23. My airflow is still halfway open. Going to fire this one at 60 watts. Have a quick vape with that one. And that one... Halfway open, it's going to be a restricted direct lung. If I fully open it all the way, totally. Fully open, there's still a slight restriction. I prefer mine halfway, a bit more restricted. But yeah, even this one, fully open, won't be a total open direct lung. There'll always be a slight restriction there, I must say. Going to go over the looks of this one, the fit and finish. Like I said, this is going to be the third incarnation of the Valhalla V2 RDA. You've got the original Valhalla V2, which is going to be a bigger one, obviously, of 40 millimeters. The Valhalla V2 Mini at 30. This one, the Micro at 25. From what I've seen from the pictures and the reviews, the original V2 and the V2 Mini, the build deck is the same. The way the airflow works is the same with an ultimate insert at the top cap. It's no different for all three. The only difference will be the sizes. I can't go by the flavor on the other two, because I never had them. This one though, the Micro, is a really good flavor, I must say. So yeah, like I showed you there in the up close, the build deck is really simple to build on. It's a nice, simple dual coil RDA. The airflow, it is top down in a way. It just comes here at the top down and through the hole and into the coils. When it comes at the coils, it is slightly at an angle, which is why when I install my coils, I install my coils slightly towards the center. It's one of those build decks, you need to play around with it, see which one you style you like personally yourself. Some people might want the coils directly over those air holes. I like mine slightly towards the center. The airflow still hits it at an angle like this, giving it really good flavor. Like I showed you, there is going to be a squonk pin inside this one in the packaging. This one, squonk wise, I see no issues. It'd be really good to squonk with. I've got mine here as a dripper, obviously. So yeah, build deck, really simple. Wicking is really simple as well. I've had no issues and no dry hits with this one. The 810 drip tip is nice and comfortable. It's a bit low profile, but it is quite nice in the mouth. That will take me down to the flavor. When I first got this in the post, I put in a different build. I tried that for a day. Now I'm trying this build as well. So two different builds, and both of those builds have given me really, really good flavor. For flavor, the Valhalla V2 Micro, I will actually give easy a 9 to 9.5. That's probably one of the highest scores I've ever given to an RDA. So that says something. Like I said, two different builds, and both times, really, really good flavor. Put some more juice in there, because I can feel it's getting a bit dry. So yeah, that's going to be my thoughts and my opinions on the Valhalla V2 Micro from Vapors Cloud. Like I said, this was sent to me from Daniel, so big thanks to Daniel. And yeah, guys and girls, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you're new to me, not seen me before, my name is Kieran. This is, of course, another vape channel, and I will see you all on the next one.